that uh, he would, since we can't make this nonpartisan mm -hmm. because, you know, you'd have to change the legislation, he thought, just like I do, and I think like all the other candidates did, because when they were asked the questions in different forums and interviews, should it be nonpartisan? And it should be, because just like a magistrate, it shouldn't matter what party you belong to, you're there to enforce the law and to run the department. So when he came towards me and said, hey, I would like to have a Republican a as my chief deputy so we can make this bipartisan so we have multiple ideologies represent the department, I, I had told him, I said, let me think about it. Because you know, I'm not, and I was very clear, I'm not, not going to change my ideology, never have. Uh, but after talking with him for an extended period of time and thinking about it, it made sense. If we can't make it nonpartisan, let's make it bipartisan and represent everybody in the county. You do realize by doing this that neither wing of each of your individual parties will ever talk to you again. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> You're not even allowed to be photographed with a person from the opposite party any longer. <laughs> the two of you are going to be in the same room together I was doing say, stuff like together. Like little pariahs, just the two of them photographed together from now well, on. You, you know, uh, they did the same thing to Nikola Tesla, right? <laughs> and Elon Musk, mm -hmm. you know, and Jeff Bezos. You know, people with great ideas and thoughts always get you know uh, knocked around at first. But then when people realize, well, that's a, that's actually a good idea, then. They go with it. David, you talk about the interview process. How many people did you consider? Uh, I considered four different people during that time. But um, Davy Jones, I mean, talking with him, meeting him during the forums and the process during the primaries and all the candidate forums, I, I just found him to be almost refreshing to see that somebody is as, wanting to be as involved with the county as I did. Mm -hmm. So it, we just moved forward. We continued talking. And I told him, no matter what, during the whole process, I, I, I want him to represent who he is. I don't want him to change at all. I want him to stick by everything he stood for and everything I'm going to stand for, I'm going to stick by. Come a little closer to your mic, David. Oh, sorry. You're fine. And um, we, we just decided that it, if we can make it a bipartisan we can show the residents in this county that we're here for them. We we want to make everybody feel like they're all involved. It's not just, oh, he's a Democratic candidate. Is he really going to look out for me? I'm a Republican. We're like, no, we want to sit there and represent everybody and take care of everybody in Berkeley County. Why should you be the sheriff the next time we swear in a new sheriff or re swear in a current sheriff? Why should you be that person instead of Rob Blair? Uh Sheriff Blair is doing doing his job. I feel like I can bring a, a more modern approach to the sheriff's department. Uh, increase the pay for the deputies so we can keep them. Increase the uh, amount of personnel that we have on the department from the 60-odd deputies that we have now and possibly go up to 100. What is a more modern approach, David? Uh, to, to utilize the drug interdiction. Uh, the manufacture, transportation, and distribution of drugs would be addressed a lot more uh, to work on traffic enforcement, uh, community outreach for the homeless and the, uh, the people who are in need of help with their uh, the drug epidemic, school safety, school security, uh, utilizing a drone program for tactical and for search and rescue for within the county. Uh, bring in community advisory councils so we can have citizen input because when you're on the department, you don't get to see everything. Uh, the citizens out there will inform you, and you need more of their input during that. So I feel we could do that. Uh, also, business improvement districts, start talking to businesses, start beautifying the areas that they're in, uh, cleaning up the roadways, uh, uh, starting a outreach program for school by uh, doing scared straight programs by seeing if there's volunteers in the Eastern Regional Jail that will give interviews to say this is why we're in jail and this is why you shouldn't do what I did. I remember those scared straight programs when I was a kid. They were they were scared. <laughs> yeah, David, how how would you increase pay for a sh uh, deputy sheriff? Doesn't the county council control the, the sheriff's budget? How how would a sheriff be able to increase pay? Uh, I would have to petition the county council 
and if there's other ways if, that I could petition the state or possible federal funding to do anything that I can to help increase because our men and women on the sheriff's department deserve to be treated as the professionals that they are and to be paid. I mean, if you look at the surrounding areas, they're being paid a lot more than what our than what our deputies are being paid at this time. Well, I mean, just like, to I, note that's a commission now, by the way, yeah, no longer a council. I'm sorry, uh, but we have that issue with all state workers, teachers, sheriff, troopers. You know, we, we are surrounded by some of the richest counties in in, in the country. Um, I, I, how do you get to that level? I mean, w without extra taxes or extra things like that. Uh, we would have to we would have to find certain programs that we could allocate possible federal funding for um, where it would add money toward the budget that we could possibly use as pay raises and allocate federal funding or certain state funding to take that part out of the equation so that way it could possibly be, be used. So it, it's, it's a numbers game with the budget. Mm -hmm. You'd have to understand the budget. You have to work with the budget. You have to understand uh, the, the COPS program that uh, Sheriff Harmon had from before where he was able to get a three-year pay for the four or five extra deputies, uh, you would want to continue that. You would, you would want to continue using that grant. So there, there's certain things that you can use. And as for increasing, I, I would sit there and I would even take a pay cut if I could give the men and women in that department a pay raise. So talk a little bit about um, about how this uh, you you mentioned how this came to be. You interviewed folks. Is it common, or are you trying to make it more common that before someone is elected, they choose their chief deputy? Um, I'm not sure that I had heard that before. Um, are you saying that more people should interview? No, 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 no. I mean, just that before you're elected that you make that selection. Is that something that's happened before or? Um... Most candidates that I've seen in the election mm -hmm. here, I've only been here 17 years, Okay, um, had their chief deputies in line with them during their election, during when they announce after the primaries or even during the primaries. Uh, have a chief deputy picked out. Gotcha. So that way it goes, when they, you start your job or you start doing this, it's both of you are in line. So talk a little bit about your background. You're saying that you want to change the the focus or make it more modern. Um, refresh our listeners and, uh, and readers' uh, knowledge about who you are and where you came from and why, um, why the sheriff's office. Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I came from a background. Uh, I started the Air Force. I did 10 years active duty with the Air Force. After the Air Force, I joined the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. Uh, after 9-11, I felt the call when they asked for federal air marshals. I became a federal air marshal for two years during that time. And after that, I went back to the Metropolitan Police Department and finished my career. Um, during that time, we were a community-based policing department. We were introduced and had a lot of input with the community. Um, our supervision would target certain areas. You would do certain things. Uh, when we had problems with what we used to call porch pirates, they drop off boxes. Somebody would come up and take the boxes off of people's porches. We set up a program for that. It's the same thing we could utilize Dealing within the city, I worked almost every district. I wasn't assigned to it, but I worked in them. Uh, I got to understand the methodology, the action plans, uh, after action reports, how we could do things better, talk about it. I feel we could implement that here because we are growing. Berkeley County is one of the fastest growing, if not the fastest growing county in West Virginia. and. We're getting our urban bases, Hedgesville, Spring Mills, Martinsburg, Jarrettstown, Inwood. Every area is starting to grow and become small little urban or semi-urban hubs. Uh, we need to address it as such. Uh, we, we need to approach it with our community-based policing to involve the citizens 
in what's going on. So they're part, they, they can trust the police. We've had too much sentiment over several years where it's the anti-police movement, which was completely wrong. We need to bring the community back. The community want, you know, wants and needs, and I'd love for them to love the police again as much as I do. So you come from a uh, obviously a large city police department. Uh, how do you balance that experience with what we have here, which is very s- suburban, if you will? Uh, the sheriff's department really, you know, is spread very thin. How do you bring that experience to to Berkeley County? It's it's almost exactly the same, because when you're working in the city, when I was in the sixth district, we had, uh, it was just houses and apartments and condos, it, it's all the same. You're just more concentrated. Here, we're starting to get that too. You see communities popping up, Cardinal Point, huge community, new one. You're gonna be addressing it all as the same because you're gonna to have to take that approach of, we're becoming a major area, we need to treat it as such. We need to bring about drug task force, traffic task force, dealing with DUIs, dealing with school security, dealing with theft. Uh, dealing with speeding, dealing with working with the Highway Commission to make sure lights are in sequence. Uh, as I said, with the schools, working and with the combined effort of the schools, to which I, I really they need to understand Narcan, uh, how to identify certain things, when to get in touch with us, uh, community, uh, the bullying online. If parents have problems with that, they should understand that we could put out information and they can contact us and we can assist. And what are your thoughts on SROs? Uh, should it be funded through the Sheriff's Department or should it be funded through the uh, Board of Education where it's more of a private uh, uh, police force? I think it should be board uh, funded through the state. If we're gonna do it, the, the state is saying we have a billion dollar surplus. We want armed security in the school. That's great. I say we get an armed security force to go through a background check through the sheriff's department, go through the training and be supported by SROs. That way it'd free up deputies to handle, you handle this area. It would be a supervisory role. Would these that, be law enforcement officers or security guards? David? These would be armed security, like a uh, special police officer. So uh, when you do this- so They would have the power to detain, but not to arrest. Yes. Is there anything in particular with this particular sheriff that, or sheriff's department um, that you have seen since you've been running for office that you would change substantially anything that Sheriff Harmon, oh, there was there was a <laughs> slip there. Sure, anything Blair. that Sheriff Blair has been doing that you would say, mm, I don't know that I would just um, follow along that way. It's really not my job to critique what the sheriff is doing. I'm sure he's doing a fine job. Uh, are, are there things that he could possibly do? I'm sure there is, um, but it's not for me to say this is his administration. If if there's input as a citizen that I could put forward, I would. Uh, I, I think uh, dealing with the out-of-state issue that we have of people moving into Berkeley County and not switching their tags over and not paying the proper property taxes due to the county, I think that's a problem. Now, you, you hit on something that our audience loves to comment on, and that's the tax. And people get annoyed when people with out-of-state tags are dropping kids off at public schools in West Virginia. What's your plan to deal with that, gentlemen? Both of you, I'd like to hear from you on that. David? Well, when I was with the reserves uh, and under Sheriff Sheriff's Harmon, reserves. right, the yeah. Sheriff Reserves under Sheriff Harmon, we actually had cards, so if we, because we do a lot of patrolling. That obviously, uh, the the certified deputies are busy doing, you know, the real policing. We do patrolling, so we see a lot of these tags, right? So we had these little cards that Sheriff Harmon gave to us that we would fill out and put on their windshield, and say, "Listen, uh, notice you have out of state tags. You live in you're living in the county. The law is this. Change it." And then we kept a note of that tag number. Did you find that to be effective? And, well, we didn't do it long enough <laughs> to determine whether or not it would be effective or not. And the new sheriff, Blair, has not continued that program? Not to my knowledge. 
there are a few things that he didn't thankfully he continued with the community day which was something i had mentioned to sheriff Harmon, and that he found it important too we put together because again like dave was saying we need to have this outreach with the community and that's why it's a great match between the two of us my time in the reserves and my time in the community people know me they trust me and and i know how things work and dave being even though he's he's been here 17 years he's been out of state the 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 enmeshment between us i think will be really good and we'll be able to reach more people in the community and the, the tag issue is a big issue i live in the woods lots of people up there have vacation homes you know mm -hmm. they don't actually live there but they're also in their 60s and 70s you know so they don't really have any kids but if they're there and they're not abiding by the law i'll put a card on their windshield if you know if i if i was still in the reserves i did it before but it's, def it's definitely something we got to get a hold of because one everybody that needs to pay pay, pay their fair share right and, and it's affecting people that are paying their fair share when you don't well a vacation home's a different story yeah than someone dropping kid i assume if you're dropping your kid off at a public school here in martinsburg or hedgesville or inwood you that you're, you're a resident here right? <laughs> that's correct someone yeah. with a vacation home they may be you know nine months in another state and then here on maybe in the summer or just yeah. on weekends and that's that balance so i can see that <laughs> you got to figure out because of the different areas david as, as the sh uh, prospective sheriff what would you do in regards to that license plate issue? Uh, I agree with uh, Davey by saying, first, let's start with the warning. Uh, as we do the warning, we start a tracking system. Within the tracking system, we give them what, what the state limit is, which is, I believe, 30 days to transfer your tags over once you become a resident of West Virginia and Berkeley County. Um, once the tracking system is done, you've been issued your warning. If you don't follow through with your warning, then then we start issuing tickets there's ways to properly do, we, do this do we know the maximum fine involved in this i was going to ask that i'm i'm curious because you know if it's enough people will do that although the the price to change over is not inexpensive either um used to be whatever a certain percentage of the value of your of your vehicle but i'm i'm uh not aware right. of that i think anymore. you're right with that i think the Assessor's office and the county commission have been really pushing. Uh, when the assessor's going around, they've been looking at driveways and and sending a letter mm -hmm. out or giving a warning. Because I know that in my neighborhood it happened to a couple of our, our citizens that had moved and they got the letter and they switched over. It was very effective. Good plan. I mean, a lot of people wait until their tags are expired or their license is going to expire. And I understand that, but that's not what the law is. Hey, uh, we have three minutes left, so this will be a quick one. Davey, when you ran for sheriff four years ago, you had the famous line of, uh, stating that you would not enforce a law that you felt was unconstitutional. And I assume you haven't changed that because I know you're a constitutionalist at heart. Am I correct in assuming that? That's correct. David, what would be your stance in a situation where you've Maybe your your deputy comes to you and say your chief deputy says, "Listen, I, that law is not constitutional by my interpretation of the Constitution. I'm not going to enforce it." Maybe you disagree with Davy. What happens in that situation? We would have to uh, discuss it between ourselves. I mean, I'll respect his judgment, and if he saw something I did not, I'll listen to his viewpoint. We'll find someone with a happy medium, probably the prosecutor's office or the attorney general's office, to get clarification on it. I mean, we're here to work together, not against each other. Would you, if the law, if you felt a law was unconstitutional, would you choose to not enforce that law? My job is not to. My job is not to interpret the law. My job is to enforce the law. The interpretation is done by the legislature, and by the judicial branch. Um, that's strictly with them. Uh, if, if they're saying this is the law, then we ask for interpretation. I, I, I mean, it, it's strictly that viewpoint. I mean, if you're saying, if I think it's unconstitutional for what they did, then I bring it up to the legislature. I bring it up to the judicial branch to get clarification from them we, because it, it, that's what it's for. We have a minute and a half left. Is your chance to talk to our audience and get an early start on why folks should vote for you for sheriff? Uh, we're, we're here to represent everyone in Berkeley County. 
we're, we're here to make it a better way of life, a, a, a nicer way of life, a safer way of life. We want people to feel safe being on the streets. We want people safe uh, for their families. Uh, we don't want the drugs in our neighborhood. We want people to sit there and come and live here and say, this is one of the best places in the world to live. And if you're a criminal in this area, your time is coming. I, I guarantee you that. Your, your time is coming. We will find you. Uh, you're not going to sit there and have free reign to cause all this mischief in the area. We will come. We will find you. I understand we do have a large criminal audience, so they've been warned. <laughs> and we want to thank Davey for bringing us the biggest cinnamon roll I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah, Twisted wow. Dose. Twisted, Twisted Dose Twisted cinnamon roll. Twisted Dose right there so next thank to Thank you very much for that. There. Place your orders now. Right? There you go. There you yeah. go. Thanks, Dave. Good to see you guys. The Good bipartisan ticket for Sheriff. Davy Jones, David Jackson. It is uh, time for our break here, and this segment of our show brought to you by CMA Honda, also by the Berkeley County Health Department, where you can get a free rate on Tesla.